When you go to replace the front crank seal, this is a common leak area in these diesels because of the high internal pressures inside the crankcase, you really need to replace this race right here. If you can see, there's a little bit of a groove in there, and if you just put the new seal in, if that new seal ends up riding right where that groove is, it's going to shorten the life of the new seal. Even if you don't replace this with a new part, and we do include these in our kits, you have to pull it off and turn it around and put it on the other way. Then the seal is going to ride out on this edge where it doesn't have a groove in it. So that's all well and good. A lot of times you pull off the front pulleys and the counterbalance, and this will just slide right off. You know, sometimes it's, it's not like it's loose and sloppy. You have to remember, it's tight against this sprocket when you torque that front pulley down so it's not moving anywhere. Other times, like on this engine, they're really on there. So I went to work about a week ago. I said, I'm going to find a puller that can get in behind here. It has to be super thin. And this puller can pull that out, just like a bearing. Of course, there's an easy way to do this if you have the right equipment. This is the tool that was specifically designed to pull these seal races off. A lot of these older Mercedes 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, both gasoline and diesel engines. Take a look at this. Real interesting design. Notice this claw. This is like a circular claw, which has fairly sharp teeth right in here. So that's going to go and get behind that edge of the race when it's clamped down. And this here, this big piece that rotates, you see as you turn that in, it squeezes that jaw down tight to the back side of the race. And because it's real narrow right there, it gets in underneath the chain. That's been the problem of other pullers. There's a chain in the way. You don't see it here, but there is a chain that comes up and, and drives the oil pump here. So you can't just put a normal puller back there. It's going to hit the chain. That's why that's such a small, sharp edge. And then, of course, this long bolt, you just turn that in. Once you clamp the race, and you can just take it right off. Now watch as I do this. I guarantee it's going to put a smile on your face. So we'll turn this in as far as we can by hand. I think it was designed to turn all the way in by hand, but I found it, it just won't. There's no flat spot here. I just grab a vice grip. You can see it doesn't require a lot of force to hold it, but you just have to have something to hold it because I'm not strong enough to hold this barrel. <laughs> and make sure we push it all the way forward against that sprocket. Okay, and you have to get some real force there. All right, now let's get a 22 millimeter and see if we can turn this in. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty slick, huh? So as we all know, it's all about having the special tool. So there's a race right in there. I'll just loosen this up and the race comes right out. Now this is well and good, folks. This is it right here. But the problem is, for most DIYers, that tool costs more than $150. And that's a big bite out of your budget when you only use it one time. You probably only use this one time for one car in your lifetime. Of course, if you have multiple Mercedes that need front crank seals, this is probably a worthy investment. So I'm still trying to find a puller that I can make work for the DIYer that won't cost so much. And that he can use it and probably end up using it for something else as well. So let me show you what I've been trying the last two days to get to do the same job as this tool here. I guarantee it won't be as easy, but the goal is to just get that race off. So I haven't given up yet. This will be the final attempt at using one of these inexpensive pullers. This one is just the right size. It's just the right strength. And I was able to modify 
the ends here, very sharp edges. I had to do a lot of grinding and shaping so that this would go right in behind there. Now, once again, you got to understand, I can't put this in there and clamp it down. You say, well, why don't you put it in there and get a clamp and clamp it down and get it to break loose that race? Well, the, the chain's in the way. But there is one spot here where I can get just one side in where there's no chain because the chain doesn't go, you know, 360 degrees around the sprocket. So if I can get this to just move out an eighth of an inch, then I could get both sides of this puller on the race and crank it out. Okay, I've adjusted the puller and positioned it in behind the race. I'm going to snug these two hex bolts down to make sure I'm thoroughly clamped onto that race. Now you don't have to tighten these too much. Okay, let's see if that'll do it now. Here it comes. Uh, granted, not as fast as the factory tool, but in most cases, this can get the job done. I can't guarantee it'll work for every single situation. Now, let's take it over to the 240D and see if we can pull this thing off inside the engine compartment with the pan on the engine. Now we're going to go live on this 83240D and see if this procedure will work using this uh, less expensive puller. You know, I've already removed everything and getting ready to get that race out, and that's all included in my other video that comes with my kit. Okay, note the angle that I've got the puller on. It's cocked off to the right, so I clear the chain. Now I'm going to tighten those bolts up. You don't want these bolts tight, but you don't have to torque them. I'm going to reach up in there and, and feel. And I'm going to watch these plastic hoses. They should start to collapse a little bit. And at that point, you can go ahead and give it a try. So now I'll just grab a hold of it see if, it, if it's going to come off. Okay, it's still a little loose. I should have a ratcheting <laughs> hex wrench here. When you get those bolts tight enough, this should not rock. Okay, it's rocking slightly. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Okay, here goes nothing. Hold on to the puller with your left hand to keep it from popping off but here comes the race success I know you're thinking well Kent that seems to be a lot of work well if you want to dish out the money for that expensive puller you can probably save a half hour of work There it is. And you can see the amount of wear in this race. Look at that wear, that groove. Uh, if you would have put the new seal on, you would have certainly shortened the seal's life without replacing this race. And this one's pretty close to the center, so not always can you just flip them around. I always recommend installing a new one if at all possible.